Welcome to another episode of the Your Company, Company Health uh, Podcast. I'm your host, Andre Wright. I'm here with my good friend, Dr. Uh, Charles Wise of Hocken Bridge Chiropractic. Hey, Dr. Wise, how are you? Hi, good afternoon. Yeah, I'm glad that you're, you're here today. And I know you're, you're on the show uh, before, and it was so great that we definitely needed you back today to, to speak more about uh, the state of, of chiropractic here to to tell you, tell us your story and and uh, and and how you help your your customers. So so why don't you start with that? Tell us your story. Well, um, yeah, it's uh, thank you for having me. It's a it's a thrill to be back. And um, you know, I got involved with chiropractic care almost as a fluke. Um, my dad had had back surgery. I was in college. I'd come home for the summer and just kind of understanding that you know his back was my back, right? Genetically. Um, wanted to make sure I wasn't going to be somebody who was going to be, you know, 45 or 50 years old and having spine surgery. So I met a chiropractor in the gym and had a full evaluation. Um, he found some problems that I'd had from sports injuries and car accidents and things and began taking care of me. And I was like, man, this really makes sense for how to take care of your body, right? It's, it's very health oriented. It's very preventative. Um, I was in the bodybuilding at the time and, and you know, nutrition and, and sports. And it just made a lot of sense of if you wear your body out, where are you going to live? So we need to take time and energy to take care of ourselves. So it made so much, so much sense to me that I chose it as a profession to be able to help other people. Uh, why do you believe uh, this is so important, no more than ever for you to not only when you're you're sick, but when you're healthy to come and visit you? Yeah, so there's, there's a few different ways to understand and utilize chiropractic care. And it really depends where somebody is in their own belief systems and, and how they were taught and how they grew up. And then sometimes it takes time to understand the whole concept. You know, the, uh, the, the analogy I've always given to my patients is the first time somebody sees me, it's they probably had a problem for about seven months, right? They've tried other things. They're at their wits end. Nothing's really been helping. And then they go, well, let me try this chiropractic thing I've heard so much about. And then the second time it's seven days because they're still like, maybe it'll go away on its own. Let me try some other things first. Okay. None of that's working. Let me go see Dr. Weiss. And then the third time it's seven hours, Mm. right? Hey, I hurt myself overnight. Let me get an appointment the next morning and let me get in and taken care of right away. And then so most people still view chiropractic care from that standpoint of, I have an issue, I have a health problem, I have a pain syndrome, let me go treat it and take care of it, right? So from that standpoint, we look at the patient in two ways. One, we want to help you get out of pain as naturally and as conservatively as possible. And two, we want to help you do things where this isn't a problem that just keeps recurring all the time, right? So at that point, from, a, from an episode standpoint, we've done what we've needed to do to get you better and given you some things to do some self-work and continue to improve your condition and be in a healthier state. Now, there's a lot of people who understand, hey, if I take care of myself regularly, if I'm more preventative, maybe I have less problems in the future. And nowhere has that been more evident than in athletics. Mm-hmm. Right. What what athletes have really understood is biomechanics matter, symmetry matters, my nervous system and how it functions with my body matters. And if I do things proactively, I'm less prone to injury. I can I can elongate my career. If you look at most most pro athletes who have had incredibly long careers, chiropractic has been a big part of that on top of all the other things that every average athlete does. And so a lot of people just get to the point where they go, well, if I do something regularly to take care of my body and my nervous system, my body is just gonna function better. Mm-hmm. So that's an aspect of chiropractic care that you know we're, we're very passionate about and we educate people on, but not everybody thinks that way and not everybody's ready for that, right? There's plenty of people who don't brush your teeth every day there's plenty of people who brush their teeth every day, but never floss. And then there's plenty of people who brush and floss on a regular basis. So chiropractic care is kind of that same way. There's people who take care of their body regularly, 
And there's other people like, eh, when I'm hurting, that's when I think about needing some type of, of care. So, so talk to us about brain injuries. I know that that's one of your specializes. So talk to us about that. Yeah, so I had the, I had the honor last year of, uh, of being selected um, as a group of a, a chiropractors here in Atlanta to um, go through a certification course. Um, so, so I'm a certified brain injury specialist through the Brain Injury Association of America. And um, I, knew a, I knew some about it and we see it definitely as chiropractors in our practice. Um, I was really blown away by the extent that this is so pervasive in our society. And it, and it hits every single socioeconomic factor, right? So the old days, we all used to think about concussions, right? And sometimes in sports, you didn't even call them concussions, right? The, the old comment was, you got your bell rung, right? When I was a kid playing football and you got like, you know, plowed into by a guy and you got cobwebs in your brain, they used to break open a thing of smelling salt, shove them under your nose. You take a big whiff in, your head would clear and they send you back into play. We're light years ahead of that in our understanding now, right? A concussion is really a mild traumatic brain injury. There's actually damage that happens in the cells of the brain. And it changes the way you function. It changes, the, it changes your personality. It changes your ability of your body to function, right? Temperature regulation, reaction time, memory, all of those types of things. And it's really, really across all spectrums, right? You have, you have young athletes, right? Competitive cheer is a great example of that, right? They're flipping, you know, young girls up in the air and God forbid they miss and that person is going to hit the ground. That, that could really be a very traumatic problem. But it's also in soccer with heading the ball. It's also in um, sports, even though you're wearing a helmet, you have a collision. It's also in, I'm just walking up the stairs in a construction area and I hit my head on a beam, right? So it's, it's in all different walks of life. It's definitely in car accident care where somebody gets hit from behind and, you know, I had a headache, um, kind of don't remember much about the accident. Eh, it'll get better. And the reality is, is there's a brain injury there and it needs to be diagnosed and it needs to be treated. And our understanding of it is amazingly different, even from 10 years ago. And it affects relationships, right? I mean, the, the thing that really um, hit the nail on the head for me when I was going through the coursework was when you think of just somebody in an abusive relationship, the majority of those women have some type of brain injury because they've, they've been hit and they've been hit hard and they've been hit with objects in the head and they have brain injury and it never gets discussed. It doesn't get evaluated. It's not part of the program, but these women have been walking around who got out of abusive relationships and what they really have is post-concussion syndrome. And it, it's something that changes the course of their life. So it affects every, everyone from young children to people who are older, right, who fall. You know, you have a 65-year-old person who, you know, missed a flight of stairs or two and, and hit their head, right? Um, we just had a, a very famous actor. His name um, slips my mind right this second, um, who was on um, Full House who slipped in the bathroom, hit his head and probably missed the fact that he had a brain injury mm -hmm. and he passed away from it, right? Within the course of, of overnight, you know? So it, it really is something that I'm, I've been treating it. I've been taking care of it for 30 years, but to understand how much it really is in every part of our society is, is just staggering. Right. So uh, you, you touched on a very uh, uh, important point right there. So, uh, and I want you to talk to us about this. So, so we could all be going about our everyday life and, uh, and there are some injuries by just, as what you're saying, just bumping herself in, in the wall while just walking up the stairs or something, or just playing soccer and, 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 and uh, or the kids are playing soccer and or, uh, 
well, we are playing and just hit our head, hit the ball, and then yeah. we don't feel anything at that point. But you're saying that could have long-lasting effect. So how do we combat that? What what what's your recommendation? Great, great question. Um, but and I think the soccer thing is a perfect example of that, right? They 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 did a study um, probably fit about 15 years ago where they they looked at the mental acuity. Pardon me. They looked at the mental acuity of college students. So they took people who played soccer in high school, right? And tested them and their ability of their brain to function in college. And what they showed was people who played soccer in high school were actually showing cognitive decline, their brain, their memory, their function, their ability to recall, their ability to test was actually starting to slow down already. Well, you don't think about that, right? That there's collisions in soccer, but part of it is they practice heading the ball, mm -hmm. right? And scoring a goal or the, the ball gets kicked and it's 20 yards away and they go up and head the ball to knock it away. Well, those were creating mild brain injuries, right? So the, the, the area of that has really come a long way in, in the last two decades where you can evaluate eye patterns and start to pick up on those things and there's treatments for it. And most of the treatments aren't necessarily medication wise, they're rehabilitation where you're, you're doing certain patterns with the spine and the brain to retrain the nerve patterns back to what they were, right? right. And again, if you go back to some type of contact sport, um, 20 years ago, they never did pretests on anybody. Now it's very standard in the sport. If you have an injury, right? So let's say you're playing football and you get a concussion, they can test you immediately with the same test they did to see how much slower your reaction time is to answering the same questions and mm -hmm. then treat you and then figure out when you actually get back to your baseline. And now they know you're actually recovered from that, from that concussion or that brain injury. 20 years ago, it's when your headaches went away. Yeah. <laughs> right? And that's not it, right? That's, that's not it. The headaches are gone, but you have cognitive, you know, decline in your brain that, that is very treatable. The nice thing is, if you had a concussion a week ago or you had a, con a concussion five years ago or 10 years ago, it's still a very correctable condition, but it requires work. Right. And, 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 and as you mentioned, there uh, obviously there are advancement in, in technology where we can diagnose things a bit better. But uh, from speaking with you and other chiropractors, it's, it's, it's even uh, the urgency is more so uh, for us to to, 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 to focus on proactive care. And how often uh, should one uh, uh, go to a chiropractor? I think you should go to a chiropractor daily, but that's a whole different discussion. Oh, okay. <laughs> so um, so the, the real answer to that question is kind of what we discussed a little bit earlier, but it's also, it's very personalized, right? So depending on somebody's history, depending on, on what their lifestyle is, and, you know, I could, I could see a construction worker every day. They're so physical on their body, right? They, they, could, they could really use some type of personal care every day, right? Massage, stretching, chiropractic care, you know, those types of things to alleviate that physicalness that you're doing. For the average person, once we've gotten them through an episode, um, the average person can do really well with somewhere between, you know, once every two weeks to once every six weeks, you know, so on average about once a month is pretty good for the average person. Some people need more than that. Um, one of the things I've always based my practice on is what happened to my mom. Um, she was in a car accident when I was in chiropractic college. I was actually home for Christmas break. She got in a car accident, came home. I called my chiropractor and I said, my mom just got in a car accident. I know it's 630 at night. He said, I'll stay, you bring her, right? Which is how I practice as well, right? You don't punch out a, out a clock, you know, at seven o'clock, boom, I'm done. It's sometimes you just do what you need to do to take care of people. Um, so brought her to him. We treated her uh, for, again, 
got her through her episode, got her better. She was going in for periodic chiropractic care, but she couldn't go more than about 17 days before she'd get tingling down her arms because she had a herniated disc in her neck that was healed, right, from the car accident. Well, I moved back home. I start care with her under me. And I'm like, oh, I'm a great chiropractor. My chiropractor was good. I got all the latest and greatest techniques. I know stuff he doesn't know. I'm going to get my mom to the point that she can go months without an adjustment or she doesn't have any symptoms at all. I couldn't get her past 17 days. I moved away, sent her to a different chiropractor, a friend of mine went to high school with. He was treating her with different techniques. Nobody ever got her past 17 days without tingling in her arms. She needed care about every two weeks so that the herniated disc didn't have pressure on it and was irritating the nerves that went down her arm for decades. Didn't matter what type of providers, and she wasn't just seeing chiropractors. We sent her to physical therapists. We sent her to orthopedists, right? She didn't need surgery on her neck, but that underlying disc did not allow her nervous system to normalize and it required some type of care so that she could live a great quality of life, right? She never had a problem in 30 years because she was just getting an adjustment once every two weeks, mm -hmm. right? She didn't lose strength in her arm. She didn't have tingling in her arm. She didn't have headaches. She didn't require surgery by just getting an adjustment once every two weeks. And again, that's a perfect example of that. She had an underlying condition that was never going to get better, mm -hmm. but required some type of ongoing care. But that's symptom based, right? She had a warning signal. Right, right. For most of us, we don't have a warning signal. Just our body starts to diminish over time. We don't sleep as well. We're a little tight. We're a little agitated. And we don't realize that that's our nervous system sending us warning signals because they're really subtle. So, you know, from a from a health standpoint, using chiropractic care preventatively, it can be in a range, but you know, the average person does really well, you know, generally about once a month. Mm -hmm. All right. Good stuff. All right, so doctor, talk to us about your, uh, your, your technique. Uh, say, I'm a, yeah, your technique, say I'm, I'm a new, okay. uh, new client, uh, walk us through your process. Oh, thank you. That's a, that's a great question. Cause not every chiropractor, uses the same techniques. And then we all um, have different belief systems as well. So I had the, the honor of going to Logan Chiropractic College in St. Louis. And the instruction there is different than other chiropractic colleges, um, especially um, in the Atlanta area. And we're very multidisciplinary in our approach, right? So first and foremost, what we wanna do is make sure somebody's in the right place. Mm -hmm. I've always viewed healthcare as spokes on a wheel. Sometimes you need one spoke, sometimes you need multiple spokes, right? So sometimes you need one type of care, sometimes you need multiple types of care. Sometimes come, somebody comes in to see me, but they're in the wrong place, right? So my first goal is, is this something I can help a patient manage by myself? Do I need to co-manage with another type of provider or providers? Or they came to me, but what they really need is, a hormone specialist or an orthopedist, right? That the problem is so significant, right? Do they need some other type of provider? You know, we do a lot of work with neurosurgeons um, and pain management specialists as well. So when somebody comes in, they fill out a full health history and we do a, a thorough examination of checking all the systems in their body, not just their spine. And then, um, Sometimes we need more diagnostic information. We don't x-ray every single patient. Um, the x-rays need to be able to give us information we don't have, right? Um, if, is there some kind of underlying condition, underlying arthritis, right? Why didn't this patient get better with self-care, right? Is there something else going on there? And then based on those things, we create a treatment plan to help them through their episode. And um, from in our standpoint, in our office, we use um, physiotherapy, right? Electric stim, ice, heat, stretches, um, ultrasound, those types of things to reduce pain, reduce inflammation, relax nerves, relax muscles. And then I'm proficient in about six different chiropractic techniques. Hmm. So I don't adjust every patient the same way. And I don't adjust 
a patient the same way on every visit because based on how their body's responding, that technique may be working well or we need to try something different. So a patient doesn't always understand that, but I may have adjusted their neck with a diversified adjustment on Monday, but more with like a Gonstead adjustment on Wednesday. They just know I adjusted their neck, right? So we always choose the most conservative methods. Um, some people do really well with the traditional pop your back type of adjustments. Other people like lower force techniques or need lower force techniques. So we can tailor what we do to, to patient needs. And then there's some very specialized techniques out there that I don't do. Um, and if I feel somebody needs that, I have a, a group of chiropractors that I know very well who are proficient in other techniques that I don't do. And if they need that type of, of, of care, I will refer them to another type of chiropractor. Well said. Talk to us about some misconception of, of chiropractic here. Yeah. Um, a lot of misconceptions are, um, are, are out there and some of them are even misconceptions in the chiropractic profession itself. Right. Um, so, you know, one, one misconception that has been around forever is that, um, you know, once you go to see a chiropractor, you always have to go see a chiropractor. And a lot of chiropractors want to believe that too. And it's not necessarily true. I have patients who, you know, uh, they come in to see me and sometimes they have a significantly chronic problem. It responds very quickly to chiropractic care. Um, we start to space out visits as quickly as we can. They do very well and the problem stabilizes. There's no underlying factors there. I have patients that I've seen two or three times and I've never seen them as a patient again, but they'll all tell you like Dr. White has fixed me, right? They refer other people, but they've never had a need for more ongoing chiropractic care. Um, so that's a big one that's out there. Again, I view things in episodes, right? If you have people who just have a chronic low back problem. And again, like my mom, everything you try across the spectrum gets you stable, but you can't get over a threshold, right? You can't get over the hump. And then you need some level of underlying regular care to maintain that. But that's not every single patient, right? Um, and the second thing is um, a, another misconception that's out there is that um, chiropractors and the healthcare, other healthcare professions are kind of at odds with each other, right? There was, there was an old joke when I was in chiropractic college that, you know, DC or MD stood for mad dog and DC stood for dog catcher. Uh, <laughs> and it's ridiculous, right? You know, but there was a reason for that. There was, you know, a long time ago, the medical profession was trying to do away with the chiropractic profession, but it was at a much higher level. It was more from the American Medical Association and the American College of Surgeons really being, hey, you can't you can't work well with chiropractors, right? We just don't want you associating with them. And back then they could lose their hospital privileges if they were found working with chiropractors. Well, that kind of ended in the, uh, in the early, um, late eighties, early nineties. Um, actually there was a Supreme court decision that uh, the American medical association conspired to do away with the chiropractic profession. And they were found guilty and there was all kinds of things associated with that. Well, since that time, medical doctors have been allowed to um, co-manage and intermingle with chiropractors and medicine and chiropractic work really well together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? There and that's, are. That's, and, and that's a good one because even some, some uh, practices, they actually have a medical doctor um, mm -hmm. on site. Absolutely. So, you know, I've always viewed things chiropractors take care of things within the nervous system, but also biomechanically mm -hmm. and medical doctors are trained to look at things more chemically, right? So they're, they're working on inflammation chemically, right? Anti-inflammatories or steroids or things like that, or, or muscle relaxers to get the muscles to relax. Whereas a chiropractor, we would do more conservative things with electric stem or muscle work and adjustments and body work to, to, uh, accomplish the same type of thing, but sometimes you need both at the same time. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. you know, um, when I first moved here, I did a, a, I was 
able to go to the uh, Department of Neurosurgery at Emory Hospital and do a talk on chiropractic care. And here was the beginning of my talk. And, and if I was giving the same talk today, I would have the same entry is we don't see each other's successes, right? When a neurosurgeon sees a patient who's been to a chiropractor, it's because the chiropractic care didn't work for their condition. And when I see a patient who's been to a neurosurgeon and had surgery, it's because it's a failed back surgery or a failed neck surgery. The surgery didn't correct the underlying problem and they still have a problem going on. But if that's, if that's all we see is, man, every patient I've ever seen who's been to a neurosurgeon or an orthopedic surgeon didn't get better. And every patient I've seen, they've been to a chiropractor and it didn't help. That's your window of the world. The reality is they're not seeing 90% of my patients and I'm not seeing 90% of their patients because we got them better. Yeah, yeah. Right? And, and the idea is, is, is always to look out for the best interest of the patient. So that's it, exactly. Have to, you know, uh, focus on that holistic care and, and make the recommendation to the right, uh, right. Uh, 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 healthcare professional. So, I mean, yeah. that, that's, that's always the best. So, thing. you know, in, in our business group, you know, I've talked about this a number of times. Um, I have no preconceived notion of whether or not I can help somebody when they come in. Right. I know, I know what my, my procedures are to evaluate whether, the things I'm looking for are there. And if they're there, I can help them, right? So when somebody comes in, it's based on their history. It's based on the examination. It's, on, it's based on diagnostic findings. It's based on other types of care that they've tried. And then sometimes it's even based on a trial period of care, right? Let me do what I know how to do for about two weeks. And if we're making progress, we're definitely in the right place. If I, this is what we think it is, and it's not responding, it might be something else, right? And then we either look further, we change our techniques, or we refer for a different type of evaluation because different types of providers have been taught to look at things differently. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's how it should be, the way you explained it, you know, trying to you know, help the, the patient instead of, you know, uh, otherwise. Right. But, but doctor, uh, I can't believe that we're almost winding down. It seems like we just wow. started. <laughs> Has it been three hours already? That's amazing. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you. But I, I want to talk to us about, uh, you know, the current events impacted your, your practice. I know the pandemic were winding down. I know there, you know, there's all different things happening. It has been an amazing couple of years. It really <laughs> has. Um, I was just looking at... Um, I had to go back through some records over the last two years and I just, you know, was looking through sign in sheets and just to realize, you know, the effect that that COVID had on people's practices or businesses, right? Think of restaurants and and gyms and and hair salons and and doctors' offices. We've all been affected by this. The need for what we do hasn't gone down, but the ability and comfort level of people to get that type of service, right? I mean, I remember at the beginning of COVID, I, I went five months, four months without even getting a haircut. You know, back then you thought if you were going to touch a cereal box, you were going to die, right? Yeah. So was scared. we know a lot more, <laughs> but yep. there's, you know, what it really boils down to is there's been a lot of events, especially over the last two years that have raised the stress level of our communities just to a higher level where, you know, people are still dealing with job related stuff, um, inflation, right? And it, it doesn't even matter what causes stuff, right? There's people just, you know, you know social media is rough because everybody wants to blame everybody. It doesn't matter, right? That's a whole other discussion for another time and, and another format. But if inflation is there, if, if, if gasoline is, is higher, if, um, if our relatives in another part of the world are under you know, emotional stress because their, their country is being invaded and we're looking at you know, all different, you know, you know, that's gonna affect us. You know, that part of the world produces a significant amount of wheat, yep. right? That's going to affect all of us. I believe I saw something yesterday that 15% of the world's calories come from wheat. 
Mm. 15%. And when you look at Russia and Ukraine, they're a big part of wheat production in the world. Mm -hmm. So the reality is all of those things that I just mentioned are stressors to our body, right? They're emotional stress and that plays out in our bodies, right? It's, it's how you respond to those things. So it's more important than ever to take a step back, slow down, be more systematic about the things you do, right? Planning a little bit ahead um, of, you know, gosh, do I, do I have things in my house that if there was a food shortage for six weeks, I'm comfortable with what I have in my house to be able to get a significant amount of nutrition over a period of time while it works itself out, right? There's a big difference between, you know, let's just, I have, I have two weeks worth of food versus if I don't go shopping on Friday, I got nothing in the house. So taking a step back, creating more of a plan and then personal care is really important because stress is real. It right? is. Emotional it stress is, is real. It and it takes an effect on our body. It takes an effect on our relationships. It takes an effect on our longevity and our well-being. Um, so, you know, one of the things we've been talking about for two years and circumstances have changed, but the stressors are all high. They're just different stressors. Yeah. Right. You know, it's it's an interesting factor. Um, I look at the things that have happened in the last three or four months and I go, this is probably what pre-World War II felt like, mm. right? That there's emotional turmoil, there's physical turmoil in the world. And are we going to get involved? Are we not going to get involved? It's affecting everything, right? It's affecting the economy. It's affecting our ability to travel. It's affecting our ability to, to have consumer goods, right? They're, they're selling cars now with the ability to get the microchip later, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah. they can't get the microchips, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's those types of things that it's really more important than ever before to take a step back, take a deep breath, have a personal plan for how you're going to work with stress within your own body, but then have a personal plan of how you're going to take care of your family and your needs that... You know, we've been very lucky in this country where we haven't had issues like that. You know, the last thing I can remember in my lifetime was in the 70s when there was a fuel shortage and people were waiting in lines and you could get the, the date of the week correlated with your license plate of when you could go buy gas. Wow. wow. That was 50 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Right? You're, you're... We've, had, we've had an amazing low stress time in America for a, a couple of decades now. So we have to kind of retrain ourselves and our families on how to deal with the stressors because we're really in that time right now yeah. where stress is picking up. You're, you're perfectly right, doctor. So doctor, it has been great. Uh, again, I can't believe we, we, have, we have to do another one and we'll, we'll work on that. But I want to tell our audience, how can we reach you? Yeah. So um, I'm Holcomb Bridge Chiropractic. I'm on Holcomb Bridge Road, so I tried to make it easy. Um, the website is holcombridgechiropractic.com. Uh, phone number is 770-992-8337. And, you know, our, again, if somebody wants to just sit down and talk and have an evaluation and see if chiropractic care is something that can help them with, with their conditions, we'll be happy to do that. There's never a charge for a consultation. We always want to make sure somebody's in the right place before they're spending their dollars on, you know, we want to make sure that the dollars that they spend on healthcare are being effective for them. Nice, nice. And doctor, I'll put that on the, on the, on the website, all your information. So if someone is listening or watching, they can definitely reach out to you. Again, sir, uh, we're thrilled to have you on the show again. And thank you so much. And uh, we'll talk soon. Thank you very much.